11th October to 12th of November 2021 is when I decided that I want to learn about the full stack web development. I want to be able to build applications from the ground up using the MERN stack. And that is what I did. And in this video, I want to talk about exactly what course I used and how did I learn all of this in a matter of just 30 days. I was more of a front end developer previously, but now I learned about the back end. I learned about how to build a server, how to attach it to the database how to use different APIs, how to make a RESTful API, how to use Postman, all of that in just a span of 30 days. And I want to share with you exactly what I did. Make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe and let's get into this video. So, you know, I could have gone with a free course and I could have learned everything for free. That is definitely true. But I realized that just as I am working, if I just buy like a simple course, I would be a lot more accountable, right? So I always think that I have given money, now I have to learn as well, learn it won't so it would just be for nothing. So I wanted to invest into buying an actual course. So that's what I did. I went up to Udemy, I got myself a course and I started using that to learn about full stack web development. The course, as you can see on your screen, is called as the Complete 2022 Web Development Bootcamp that is taken by Angela Yu. I want to talk about what all does it have and why I picked this course particularly. It also was 55 hours long and it had all the basic components that I need to start my journey as a Mern stack developer. So I just went ahead with this and I want to share with you what all I learned so that you can decide if this is what you want to do, right? We first of all, learn about front end web development, what is a website, how does a website basically work and uh, that is the first module of this course. Then we get on to the actual front end development that is learning about HTML and how HTML basically works. So as you can see we learned about the basic HTML boilerplate, HTML list, image elements, anchor tags and stuff like that, just the very basic stuff. I had experience about this so I have seen it quickly. But then we went on to intermediate HTML, right? Um, we learned about tables, as you can see, we learned about forms. The best part about this course was that she was building projects from the first module itself. So tiny projects using whatever we've learned in this module, we used to build at the very end. We learned about intermediate HTML, then we went into learning about how does CSS basically work. So we learn about basic CSS, inline, external, internal CSS, how do you debug your CSS code? I felt like this course was a little bit slow for me. So I fast forwarded a lot of parts of the course. And that's why I was able to finish it in relatively less amount of time as well, right? Then we went on to learning about intermediate CSS. So we learned about favicons, we learned about HTML divs, what is the box model and how it works, which is really, really important if you're getting into CSS and learning about, uh, you know, grid model, flexbox and things like that. That is really, really important. Then we go on to learn about some very interesting and confusing aspects of CSS, which is positioning, relative positioning, static positioning. Then we go on to learn about fonts. And as you can see, it has some challenges as well that we went through. And that was just great for me to test out my ability just to check ki mujhe kitna se aata hai, right? So this is definitely something good that I learned from this one course. Then we go on to learning about Bootstrap. Abhi thoda sa purana ho gaya. Right now you have Bootstrap 6 coming out. So this is definitely a little bit old, but it still is great because you can learn about the basic fundamentals. We learned about Bootstrap by building an actual project, which was this one called as the Tin Dog. Uh, it was basically Tinder, but for dogs. So that was a really interesting project that we built from the ground up with the help of Bootstrap. And this was great. We learned a lot about Font Awesome. We learned about buttons in CSS. Then we learn about intermediate CSS. So we learn about cards here. We learn about Z index. We learn about media queries and stuff like that. So this was definitely an important aspect of this thing. Now there's just one issue with courses like these. What if you get stuck and don't know what to do next? That's where you can take a look at this video sponsor, Coding Ninjas. Coding Ninjas is one of the largest edtech companies in the coding education space, having taught over 50,000 students so far. You get to have one-on-one -on -one doubt support. The courses are created by software engineers from Facebook and Amazon, and they also have a dedicated placement cell. Now, Coding Ninjas is coming up with a scholarship test where you can get up to 100% scholarship on all of their courses. 
everyone who enrolls for this test will get to have amazing benefits like a 1500 rupee coding interview preparation book for completely free. The test is on the 23rd and 24th of January 9 p.m. If you miss the test on the 23rd, you can take it on the 24th on the same time. The test contains only 30 aptitude questions and you don't need to know how to code. You can check out the link in the description to sign up for this scholarship test. You can also use my code Ishan to get a 50% discount on the registration fees which is only 100 rupees. So do take a look at this and now let's get back to the video. Then we go on to learn about web design. If you want to take this, then you can. If you want to learn more about how does design elements work when you're building a website, right? Then you get into JavaScript syntax. We learn about ES6 syntax. So this is definitely an important part of the whole course, learning about the basic JavaScript fundamentals. Once we are done with that, then we go on to intermediate JavaScript. We learn about building basic projects like we have the BMI calculator and we also have the leap year challenge. If I give you a year, you should be able to tell me if that year is a leap year or not. We learn about for loops as well as while loops. And then at the end, we have this Fibonacci code challenge, which is also a really interesting thing. Now at the very end of every single module, you will find a tip from Angela type of a video in which she'll just be talking about some things that you should keep in mind when you are learning to code. After that, we learn about basic document object model and how it basically works. We learn about different selectors that you can use to pick certain elements in HTML with the help of JavaScript. After that, we learn about advanced JavaScript and DOM manipulation. This was also good because in this, we learned about how can we create noise or how can we integrate a sound effect with the help of this drum kit challenge. So we learned about how to play sounds. We learned about how to detect for events. Whenever an event is executed, how can you react to that with the help of JavaScript? After that, we had jQuery, which I was not really sure about because jQuery is quite old. So I skipped on for jQuery. I went on to learn about the next part, which was the Simon game and the Unix command line. Now this is where you are done with the front end development phase and you're now getting into the back end development part, right? And this was the more exciting part for me because as I said previously, I had a lot of knowledge about all of these things previously itself, but I was unaware about back end development and how it all works. So we learn about Node.js, learn about Express.js, as you can see, right? So it starts off with basic Node.js. How does it basically work? How can you install NPM packages. Then we get into the more important part, which is Express.js with the help of Node.js. We learned about how to build a very basic server, do some calculations. So this was definitely an important module. Then we went on to APIs. This was another really important thing. We learned about how does JSON really work? How can you parse JSON? How can you use JSON.stringify? And then we learn about what are post requests and how can you use that? This was an interesting part because here we learn about how to use the MailChimp API to make a very simple newsletter subscribing website. So you can enter your email, you can enter your name and you can click on submit. We use Bootstrap for the front end and at the back end, we were able to retrieve all of the emails and your names with the help of the MailChimp API. That, that was a really interesting project that we made. After that, we learned about Git and GitHub and how it all works. This was another very important thing to do if you are building applications, if you are trying to share it with someone or if you're trying to host it somewhere. Importantly, you should take a look at branching and merging and how it basically works. So she delves a lot deeper into this. As you can see, it's a 17 minute video. Then we go on to EJS. EJS is really important because here we can use HTML templates so that you don't need to build an HTML page from the ground up. You can use some templating. So this was really, really important. Then we go on to building our very own blog website on which we can write a blog. We can publish a blog. The blog will be visible. You can click on that. You can open up the blog and you can read it properly. And then you can also search for a blog. Okay. So that was definitely a great project that we built. It took a lot of time, as you can see, two hours, 38 minutes, but it was definitely worth it because we learned so much from this one project itself. So this one was really great. After that, we learn about databases and how they basically work. We go into SQL. After SQL, you learn about MongoDB. And first of all, talks about how to install MongoDB on Mac, Windows. Then we go on to using the shell. We learn about how can you read queries? How can you delete queries? How can you update queries as well? So this was definitely a great module. And then along with MongoDB, we also learn about what is Mongoose and how it basically works. After that, we build a very basic to-do list using a database that is using MongoDB at the backend. Um, this was another great way for me to experiment and try everything out and make sure that I understood everything from the basics. Then I learned about how to deploy my application on Heroku. So this was definitely a great module for understanding about how deployment basically works. 
with the help of the command line interface. And then we get on to the challenge number four, which is the blog website update. So what happened is that previously we just had a simple blog website on which you can make a blog, you can read a blog, you can delete the blog, but then the blog doesn't stay there. If you were to refresh the website, it just, it is gone, right? So we used MongoDB to store all of the different uh, blogs right there. This was definitely a really interesting project. After that, we learned about how to build our very own RESTful APIs from scratch. So this was another very important thing that we did with the help of Express.js and MongoDB. Then we went on to the really, really important part, which was authentication and security. This is by far the most important thing that you should be doing as a Monstack developer. Many people miss out on this. So we learn about different levels of security that you can create. Level one is just the basic idea of storing the passwords in MongoDB as it is without doing any type of encryption. Level two is about how do you encrypt your database. Then we learn about how can you hash your passwords and then we learn about bcrypt. We learned about cookies, we learned about sessions and then we used passport.js to implement the sign in with Google functionality. All in all, this was a very important module for you to take a look at whenever you're building something that actual people will be using. So that's how that works. After that, we learned about React.js. This again is big. I had some previous experience with React.js, so I didn't spend a lot of time over here, but I spent a lot more time learning about how does React hooks work because I was a little bit weak on that concept. At the very end, we had a very simple keep project that we made with the help of React.js and using whatever we've learned in the past, MongoDB, learned about authentication and security, learned about all of those things. So we were able to build a very simple Google Keep type clone in which you can log in, you can create all of the different nodes that you might have, and then you can sign out, you can again sign in, you can view all of your nodes, but that's basically how it worked. This is a great course that you can take if you want to learn about full stack web development. Do take a look at this course if you're interested. The link for this is going to be in the description. You can buy it if you want to. I don't have any collaboration with the instructor. I just like this course. I took it myself. So I'm recommending it to you. If you want to check it out, you can do that. That's it. That's all I have for you today. Let me know what you think about this. If you have any questions about the same course, let me know in the comment section. 30 days is all it took me to learn about backend development and React.js as well. The next step is for me to build a lot of different projects. I also built a simple Candy Crush clone with the help of React.js. So that was definitely an interesting thing. I think it was a great course for the price of just 400 rupees. You get access to such high quality content. The instructor is highly experienced. So you can totally take a look at this if you are interested. Also take a look at Coding Ninjas with the link in the description. That's all I have for you today. I will see you in the next video.